This is video of local attorney Atar Hasabula asking a Metro officer why his fraternity brother is being detained. Instead of answering... What? Wait, why y'all, yo, he didn't do anything. What are y'all doing? The officer detained him as well. Atar says he and his frat brothers were waiting for an Uber after leaving a protest Monday night. They saw Metro arresting a man across the street, so his frat brother started recording. That's when he claims the officers singled them out. He's pointing at my fraternity brother, and then all of a sudden three officers charge in our direction. Okay. Um, at least two of the officers tackle him to the ground. Atar says before this interaction, he and his friends were recording themselves singing their fraternity hymn in front of the courthouse. When he says officers started firing beanbags at them without warning. Our backs were turned. There was no verbal directive to disperse, to leave, no nothing. Atar recently received a community partner award from the Metro Police Department. He says the fact that he was still treated like a criminal despite his accomplishments is a part of the reason people are out in the streets protesting right now. What am I being detained for? What am I being detained for? Eventually, police let him and his frat brothers go. But he says it's a situation that could have ended much differently for someone else. And it can't be a situation where civilians are required to de-escalate the situations from officers. It puts an unfair burden and onus on those that are peacefully protesting. All across the world, they are protesting this very same issue. When a world uproars about a nation that's brutalizing uh, a culture of people, I think we need to realize and pay attention to that. DeQuincy Taylor is a local activist and former North Las Vegas mayoral candidate. He attended a protest Sunday night and says even though he remained peaceful, he got hit with several rubber bullets. We didn't hear a warning to disperse if they did. Um, I know I didn't hear one at all. I was waiting for one. If they're, they're issuing an order um, to disperse, that they give people time and they, they acknowledge that they need time and they may not have even heard them. The ACLU of Nevada says they have an issue with some of the methods that police are using on protesters. Rubber bullets and pepper balls and there's been all manner of, of items that have been shot at protesters by the police. We think that those are unnecessary. It's overly aggressive. Basically domestic terrorists. Clark County DA Steve Wolfson describing three Las Vegas men, 35-year-old Stephen Parshall, 23-year-old Andrew Lynham, and 40-year-old William Loomis, arrested May 30th by the Joint Terrorism Task Force on federal conspiracy and firearms charges and state charges of conspiracy to commit terrorism and manufacturing explosives like these Molotov cocktails in a picture obtained by NBC News. These three individuals were planning over a period of weeks uh, to uh, firebomb certain structures, to detonate Molotov cocktails, to, in their words, cause chaos. According to investigators, they originally planned to cause chaos as Nevada reopened into phase one from the COVID-19 shutdown, but the protests following the death of George Floyd created an opportunity. It's just that the protests which have been going on, the peaceful protests that people have a right to do, the right to assemble, the right to express themselves, uh, those activities just gave these criminals more opportunity to express their criminal behavior. That criminal behavior not being tolerated by federal authorities in Las Vegas. U.S. Attorney Nicholas Trutanich issued a statement on the arrest saying, quote, Violent instigators have hijacked peaceful protests and demonstrations across the country, including Nevada, exploiting the real and legitimate outrage over Mr. Floyd's death for their own radical agendas. We've got uh, law enforcement out there, and uh, they're on it. And I don't have to go into a lot of detail, and I think um, most everybody knows that law enforcement has a lot of tools at their disposal. Wolfson says these suspects were arrested by the Joint Terrorism Task Force before they had a chance to hurt anybody. The DA says if convicted on both the state and federal charges, those three suspects could be looking at up to life in prison. Reporting live from the Regional Justice Center, Steve Wolford, News 3. Back to you. Yeah, Marie, and really from day one, members of the community have been reaching out, many just stopping outside here at UMC just to pay their respects. And now if you want to leave a message for the officer and his family, there is a way to do it online.
you know, a lot of prayers, a lot of uh, heart emojis, blue and black. It's an idea that took off overnight. It definitely gives you goosebumps. Radio personality Big D with 95.5 The Bull reading online messages to injured officer Shay Michelonis. Already well over 1,000 since the radio station first posted a virtual get well card on Wednesday. We're going to build the stage but we want you, the Las Vegas community, to stand on it, to, to appreciate them, right? Like, this isn't a, a radio station thing to be like, hey, the radio station cares about you, officer. Look, no, it's, hey, we reached out to our friends and community and look at. Michelonis was shot in the line of duty Monday night, trying to disperse a group of protesters near Circus Circus Hotel and Casino. While a suspect has been arrested and charged, Big D says the online prayers give the community an outlet. Entries that read, keep fighting. You've got this battle, we've got your back. And these are people that suit up with the intent to protect somebody they've never met before. Forever lifted high. Outside University Medical Center, another show of support. Members of two local churches singing and praying for the officer's recovery. Wake up, wake up, wake up in the name of Jesus. Signs, flowers, and candles lining the street. We, we love what uh, the officers do for our community, and uh, and we, uh, you know, we, we just want to see God bring healing. So I think it's time for us to pray, not only for the officer, Shay, but I think we need to pray for our, for our city. So I think it's time to, to be together because uh, uh, we need to do something. Back at 95.5. The difference between a playlist and a radio station is a playlist is a part of your drive. A radio station can be a part of your life. Big D says the plan is to print each message and create a book for Michelonis and his family. Hope for a young officer now fighting for his life. The NBA another step closer to returning to play. Sans fans, of course. Today, that league's Board of Governors approved a plan that would have 22 teams finishing the season at Disney World in Orlando. The league is reportedly aiming for July 31st as a restart date, with the NBA Finals taking place in mid to late October. How strange. This plan still needs to be approved by the players, who reportedly are expected to accept the terms.